Well, after the way we lost that last night, I'm frustrated and deflated this morning. I'm going to discuss that VAR decision and the game on a whole. I've slept on it and I'm back again right here on West Dublin Official. We're going to discuss all those decisions and the game and that is coming next. Well, Lucas Paqueta gave West Ham United a lead inside 13 minutes. It's the second time we've scored inside the first 15 minutes of a Premier League game this season. Coincidentally, the first time was on Sunday down at the Vitality Stadium. We've scored in games in the first 15 minutes back to back on two occasions and that can only be a plus. We started the game really, really well. You know, Liverpool had a couple of chances as well, but we took our chance when we got it. And what a well-worked goal it was. Lucas Paqueta, I clap you all day. What a goal that is. You know, the build-up play, the one-touch football, the one-two with Antonio, and to bang it. I know it was in the top corner, but he hit it with some pace. Should have, should should Alisson have saved it? I don't know, and I don't really care, to be honest with you. What a goal. And we're starting to see Paqueta really thrive now. You know, he's still getting his foot in midfield, dominating his part of midfield really well, and he's making an impact going forward. This is the player we signed. It's taken a hell of a long time to see it, but we're finally seeing uh, the player that we signed, which is, you know, an absolute bonus for West Ham at the moment. And hopefully we can keep this form going for him and he can end the season on a real high. But then, you know, Liverpool piled the pressure on. We did have a couple of chances to uh, double our lead, actually. But uh, just, I think it was five minutes and 48 seconds later, Cody, Cody Gakpo from outside of the box. Nobody closed him down. Somebody could have prevented the shot, but uh, nobody got anywhere near him. Uh, and he sort of, well, he didn't really drill it. It had a couple of bounces and in off the post. Now, a few people have laid, laid question marks on Fabianski. I don't, to be honest with you. you know, if it's if it's any closer to him, then I probably would. But it goes in off of the post. It was, you know, as far in the corner corner as he could have got. I know it bounced twice, but to lay to lay blame on Fabianski there is harsh for me. And I'd much prefer to put question marks on the midfield pairing for not closing him down and letting him shoot uh, from that distance. If I'm honest with you, uh, but. It is what it is. 1-1. We are back level. And then, um, I mean, it was coming really, wasn't it? They had a couple of corners in succession and they sort of took control of the game in the second half. Uh, Joel Matic with a bullet header and what it was, Antonio just sort of looked at him as he ran past him and headed it in. This zonal marking does my head in. You mark your man. I don't know why we don't just do that. And, Kurt, um, and, jo and Joel Matic puts it into the back of the net to give Liverpool the lead. And that's the way it ended in the end. Now, um, Going into the last couple of minutes, I think we were all slightly frustrated. Obviously, we had the goal disallowed for VAR uh, because of the offside, which was very, very marginal. So that was frustrating. That would have given us a 2-1 lead and sent the game in a completely different direction. So that's frustrating. And again, of course, the VAR decision at the end. Now, before I talk about it on a whole, I think it's key that I sort of outline my position on it and you know many, many people probably from different fan bases are going to go you've had plenty of VAR decisions this season I know that you know I'm not disregarding the luck we probably had with VAR this season because we've had quite a bit of it Bournemouth at home Fulham games um, just to name a couple there but that still doesn't strip strip um, strip strip away the ability for me to criticise and say, I think that VAR decision is wrong. I've still got the right to say that, and I'm going to do that right now because I think that decision was blatantly wrong. And I know Bournemouth fans do the joke about the care of sort of, he was playing volleyball. Well, Thiago was playing basketball in the box, for God's sake. Two clear contacts with his arm. It's as blatant as you get. How on earth is that not given a penalty? And I'm not having this, it's breaking a fall. And yes, probably that Chelsea Thomas Sujic game was a clear handball. But the rule is he was breaking his fall going down. That wasn't breaking his fall. He was lunging into a tackle. There's three things that I find wrong with this. Firstly, lunging in in the box is always a danger when you're a... Uh, when you're a defender, it's dangerous play because because if the player on the ball, I can't remember who it was, if the player on the ball is in the wrong position there, he gets studs up halfway up his um, halfway up his shin. It's dangerous play, and he's lucky Tiago that he missed him actually. The second thing is the obvious, you know, coming down on the ball and stopping the track of the ball. It's as clear as you get, and the thing to come off the back of that is, as a result of Tiago stopping the ball with his hand twice. 
the ball doesn't go through to Danny Ings, who was waiting, who was on side, to put it in. Because he had a one on one then, and you'd and you you know give Danny Ings a pretty good chance of scoring a one on one, wouldn't you? Because if you if you if you look at the clip again, he stops the ball and Danny Ings is coming in and he's got a clear path to the ball and he probably would have put it in anyway. So you know where and how are we going to get an explanation out of this? And I understand we've had some good VAR decisions this season, but we're still not forgetting that one at Stamford Bridge because that looks bad on us now because Chelsea are crap. And we lost to them at their place. <laughs> that looks bad on us because that was a horrific decision. And I cannot understand. I've studied the law book and, you know, it baffles me at times as well. I don't think it's a natural position. A similar thing happened at the Bournemouth game at home um, where the player lunged in to try and block it. And for a lunge in, it's probably a natural position the um, defender made. But his arm was up here. It, it stopped the track of the ball and the penalty was given. I can understand that it's slightly accidental with this Thiago one, but it still doesn't take away from the fact that it stops the ball going to its going to its obvious direction. And it's a clear, you know, there's no question marks whether it touches his hand. It clearly touches his hand twice. So how it's not given, I don't know. I really don't know. I think Joe Cole and Carlton Cole summed it up perfectly um, after they got the commentators off who were um who were Obviously, in Liverpool's back pocket. Listen, Steve McManaman's a sort of Liverpool fan as they come, and he's he's just about as biased as they come. So he, he was he was trying to you know force out an explanation for it. The neutral commentator was sort of like sitting on the fence a bit and like agreeing with Steve a little bit. The Coles got on there and they didn't hold back, did they? You know, go go and watch the clip. They both said how clear a penalty it was, and the and the Liverpool fan Peter Crouch said it was a penalty as well. Like, what are we getting at here? Because again, last night you get a meltdown on Twitter from the fan bases of the other 14 clubs in this league. And I'm sorry, there's an issue there. There is an issue here because I don't see how that's not a penalty. And the Villas, the Newcastles, the Brightons, you've got all this to come. Brighton have had it already. You've got all this to come because we started to get it when we pushed them big boys for Europe. And you're going to start getting it as well. If there's any Villa or Newcastle fans watching this, good luck because you're going to get the same as what we got when we were going up there. And I think the reason for it is, is because they don't want, you know, these clubs in Europe. I don't think they want us in Europe. They want their big six in Europe and let's finish it there. That's what they want. And that's what they're trying to get. I honestly do not understand. And the shit audacity. And David Moyes is bang on right here. David Moyes said, um, I think he said along the lines of, I think it's disrespectful that he didn't go and have a look at the monitor. Now, also Joe Cole picked up on an interesting point here, which sort of beds into this as well. He said, if this is at Anfield, that's given. And Peter Crouch sort of disagreed with him and went, no, nah, they're sat in, sat, sat in Stockley Park. But what an interesting point to raise. And I think it's bang on as well. If that's at Liverpool, he is told to go and look at that monitor. If that's an Anfield, he's told to go look at that monitor and they make a decision then. To be fair, I was urging West Ham just to kick the ball out. And Paqueta did in the end. He kicked the ball out of play and then sort of it was an anticlimax. Nothing happened. Moyes went over at the end and he said in his post-match, he said, well, I didn't get it. He, <laughs> when, the, when the pundit asked, did you get an explanation? He sort of chuckled and went, no, of course I didn't. Are we going to get an explanation today? Are we going to get one of them stupid apologies from the PGM, PGMOL, whatever they're called, right? Is Howard Webb got another payday? Whoever's got another payday? The head of VAR was on VAR last night. That Neil Swarbrick is geezer. He was on VAR last night. They said it before the game. I'm sure they did. So the head of VAR, once again, is at the forefront of another controversial decision. Because the rest of the league can see it. Liverpool fans are trying to find a way to not give it a penalty. But there's many, but there's many Liverpool fans coming out and saying that's a stone wall. Because it is. It's just it's, it's frustrating because there's a point and now it puts even more pressure now for us onto that game at Selhurst Park on Saturday. Um, and, you know, if we wanted to do a clop and moan, we could do. Why would we play Saturday off 12? You know, that's that's annoyed me as well because we're playing because we played Thursday, Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday off 12. But. I'm sure we won't moan too much because we're not Klopp and Liverpool. But um, the one thing that made me laugh as well, Klopp went on his post-match, he said, um, to the, I think it was Jonathan Pierce, the BBC Match of the Day commentator, um, he said, um, he said to him, have you seen it back? Um, Jurgen Klopp said, I haven't seen it. He said, yes. And Jurgen, Jurgen Klopp said, what did he th what do you think? And he said, I think it's a penalty. I think it's handball. That's what Jonathan Pierce said. And then Klopp went, no, I don't think it is. People are starting to wake up here. 
because there's a serious fundamental issue here. And he didn't even go and look at the monitor. I think that is a clear and obvious error. And how VAR looked at that, and it's not as if they didn't have much time to make the decision, because the ball was still in play for another good 60, 60 to 90 seconds before uh, the ball went out of play and they could talk to the referee and have a serious think about it. It's a pivotal moment in a game that's hanging by a thread and he's not even told to go and look at the monitor. I don't understand it. That monitor is there for the referee to be able to have the ability to make the on-field decision. And he's not even allowed to go and look at it now. Has he got to be told by his mates in Stockley Park to go and look at it? Because he should have said, do you know what? I need to go and have a look at this. I need to have a second look. And if he'd done that, I wouldn't have any criticism of Chris Kavanagh, whatever his name is. Right? Because if he doesn't get that in real time, it's frustrating as a way, but these, these people are human. You know, they're not always going to get it right in real time. But they've got flipping hundreds of screens in this Stockley Park, whatever it is, right? They've got every angle under the sun. And every angle shows that he clearly stops the path of the ball getting to Danny Ings. It touches his hand clear as daylight twice. And whether it's accidental or not, I don't think it is. But if it is accidental, I don't know what the rule is with that. But it's a clear handball and you can't deny that. You really can't. Frustrated today, you know, but by no means am I um, dismissing the VAR decisions we've had this season because we've had some we've had some ones as well uh, that have gone for us. But I'm still going to call out ones that are against us because, again, last night I think that's poor and it's no coincidence it comes up against Liverpool, is it? There we go. That's my thoughts. We will now move on to a game against Palace on Saturday at Selhurst Park. There's a bit more on that game now. We definitely need to pick up something there. Otherwise, we could just drag ourselves slightly back into it, which is not what we want at all. Oh, thanks for watching. Frustrating, deflating, annoying in the end. But we can't dwell on it now. We've got to move on and we'll get a... Um, and we'll get an apology from Howard Webb in two days' time. Come on, your eyes, my sister, right here. I'm West. I'm an official. Thank you very much. Um, bye bye.